Hello, my Lily More Thoughts. Welcome to another video, not a live stream today. So I've been getting a lot of questions about the Ultimate Decades Challenge, and I kind of want to elaborate, go in and kind of explain the rules as well as the spreadsheet. So you guys have something to refer back to if you ever have any questions. You don't really know how things work because she's a little bit of a complex girl. All right, there will be timestamps down below so you can refer back to that if there's certain sections you're more interested in. So without further ado, this is going to be a long one. Go ahead and check out the rules. All right. Well, welcome to Amor's Ultimate Decades Challenge rules set from the 1300s to 2020. Now, there's a few things that I do want to get out of the way before we get started. First things first is that these rules are still under construction and they are subject to change. Hence why it is in bold with exclamation points at the top. So just be wary of that. Also want to state that we are still playing the Sims 4 game. This challenge is not going to be 100% accurate. It will never be 100% accurate. That's not possible. This is the way that I started playing, the way that I like to play in the Sims 4 with the Ultimate Decades Challenge. And ultimately, this is just to have a lot of fun playing historically. You can change things around. Feel free to do so. I don't want to make people sad or upset so it's like if you don't want to kill a sim then you don't have to kill a sim i'm not in the business of bringing down the vibes you know <laughs> by all means make changes um i also want to issue a huge trigger warning because you will be playing through wars pandemic tragic events and you're gonna be seeing and having a lot of your sims dying including babies toddlers children infants because they're coming um so yeah and last but not least and most important my depiction of this challenge does not in any way allow or support the ideas of racism homophobia incest slavery genocide sexism and colonization. All right, well, that being said, shout out to Zombie Chloe, who is the original creator of the Decades Challenge. You guys also at the start have a link to my personal spreadsheet, so you can always refer back to my spreadsheet, as well as the live streams if you guys wanna check those out. Um, all right, you get a brief explanation as to what the Ultimate Decades Challenge is, but we're gonna skip that and we're gonna go straight into the info dumping and we're gonna work hand in hand together with the rules and the blank spreadsheet. So I have something to refer back to. All right, so this challenge is very hands-on. Um, so if you don't want to play a very hands-on challenge, then this is not going to be for you, and that is okay. The first thing we have to get out of the way is time. Since we're playing with actual time, when you play regular Sims 4, there is no passing of time, really, except for your Sims aging. But you don't see things around you progressing. So we're playing with actual time. We're starting in the 1300s. This is when this officially starts. You'll notice that every four Sim days equals one year. And after that, that you're gonna start a whole new year. So on and so on. One thing that I like to do to keep track and you'll notice on my personal decades is that I will mark or highlight, highlight each day passing so I know where I'm currently at. Definitely suggest you guys doing that. Now, because we are messing with time and every four Sim days equals a year, we do have custom aging. And as of right now, the Sims 4 does not allow like Sims 3 custom aging. So that is unfortunate, but that's why we have a chart to keep track of all your Sims and all their birthdays and aging. So this is where the hands-on portion really begins. Um, you guys can check out the chart to see how long each life stage is the length and like the technically how old the sim would be um, i'm not gonna go into it that much but i am here to explain how to use this portion so let's just say your sim gave birth to a healthy baby boy named john sure why not let's go with john referring back to you will put this on the day that baby was born and for me, I'm just going to put it on the first day, day one. And that baby was born on, in the 1300s, the year 1300. Referring back to this key, you will always practically be rolling for something, for some sim. <laughs> 
When that baby is born, you will roll to see if they survive as well as the mother. But assuming you roll and the baby rolls a good roll, it's none of these numbers, then the baby lives. Congratulations, baby John. You get to live for like a Zim day because infants are being introduced. So this has changed a little bit. So now John will get to progress, hopefully to infancy. Now John ages into an infant. Happy birthday. You roll again. <laughs> Assuming again, he doesn't roll a bad roll. It doesn't roll any of these numbers. He survives. Good on you, John. And he gets to move on. Now, infants are going to be infants for five sim days. One, two, three, four, five. You go down five, but you move on to the next column. John will be a toddler in 1301 on the seventh day so it's john's birthday you roll to see if he lives he survives toddlers are toddlers for 18 sim days so we're gonna go down 18 quick maths am i right 27 on day 27 technically it's 25 but i usually work with these numbers on the side just because they never change according to like how you know how far to the right you slide it you'll always see these numbers so i work with this but technically it's day it's day 25 anyways day 25 becomes a child you roll he rolls a good roll yada yada you kind of get the gist at this point so you'll be doing this for like every single sim until the end of their life now current Currently in the 1300s section uh, for that century, the rules and for aging only go and grant your sims to live a maximum of 50 years. And that is the average lifespan during uh, this time period. So I noticed this is where people get a little bit confused with the chart. So I do want to elaborate a little bit more. Um, when your sims reach that adult stage and assuming everything goes well and if they rolled their good rolls, they didn't roll an eight or less, uh, then they get to live out the remain the remainder of their life. So that would be 40 sim days. They have to complete those 40 sim days. So adult, John is now an adult. He's on day 123, not really 123, but we're just going to go with 123. It's probably like day 121 or something. Um, but anyways, on 163 is where he finally fulfilled that adult life stage. And now he gets to roll what I like to call his EOL, his end of life. Um, and that's why there's question marks. Cause I can't really tell you how much you're, you're, how long after he's completed the adult stage, how much after that your sim will live. So you're gonna roll a D10 for this century. And depending on how much, what number they roll, that's how many years that they have left. Not sim days, which I know is a little confusing because we have been, uh, we have been using sim days, but that's why on the side, I tried to make it a little bit more clear, but roll D10 for the X amount of years. Maybe I should put them in bold because um, it is a little confusing, but he rolled a one. So that means he roll he gets to live an extra year. Poor John. Uh, all right. He will die at age 41. And that is in the next year. And that is how you take care of end of life. So you do have to complete the, the sim days. So be wary of that part. And also be wary of the fact that at the end, they will be rolling for the amount of years they get to live. Now, another thing that I want to elaborate on is the info chart because I do get a lot of questions about the info chart. For the most part, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you put down the name of your Sims, their last names, and then here in relation, at least for your starting Sims, because there's no one else to refer back to and you're just starting off, I like to put the relation that they are to one another, to your married couple Sims. And then after that, using my, my um, info chart as an example, after that, whoever marries into the family, that's who you want to put uh, the relation of who it is. So here, my Sim married. This this Sim joined into the family, into my family tree. So it is now the husband of Winifred Ward. So they would the relation will always refer back to who the Sim married into. And then the children will just be the son, the children of da 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 da, whoever it is that their parents are. But yeah, starting off, you could just put husband of so-and-so and wife of so-and-so for your starting sim section. Um, sounds a little confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. Then you put the generation. Also, the person who's marrying in, their generation follows the person that they've married in.
relate into. Um, gender, you're born, status of what they, how they currently are in your uh, decades challenge. Are they alive? Are they deceased? Or you can just opt out for, are they alive or are they deceased? Otherwise it will remain blank. But we now have a drop down menu so that the counter can make sure to keep count of your living Sims, deceased Sims, and your total Sims. So this will be changing up here based on based on the drop down menu to make it look easier on you guys. Year of death, this info sheet also keeps track of how old your Sims are. Again, to make it easier on you. And then once uh, when a Sim dies, it officially gives them the life stage of where they, the when they died, how far they made it to. So in this case, it would be teen, but it will change assuming it will change depending on when they die. So it'll be adult stage, whatever. And again, this is to make your lives so much easier. And then cause of death, which honestly, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just thought it was a little neat to like make up reasons for uh, why they have died in our Discord. There are wheels that you can spin to like make believe or whatever you want to do to to see how your Sims pass. If you, you don't want to make some up or if you don't even want to use this, you don't have to you could just delete the columns by the way boop and then nationalities also are made up i play with different countries uh so i like to keep track of their nationalities you don't have to if you don't want to you don't have to make those up you can just play within the sims realm and world um so you can also delete that if you want to up to you now here's where your married sims go this is your like your, your couple um this is where I put my couple, their family name, their generation, and the year that they married. Now, most of the confusion doesn't come up around the actual info chart. It mostly has to do with the colors and like what the colors mean, which I agree is a little bit confusing. For example, I will take my Ward household uh, and I will use Winifred Ward. She is part of the Ward household. That's what she was born into yada yada but she is now of age and she's gonna get married so we have her significant other who she marries and that will essentially start the new household the new color scheme and the reason i did this is because it's just it would get too confusing not having them be differentiated because if they were all just the same color or whatever it's just it would get too jumbled who's in which household yada yada who comes from where you know so then they start the new color and their kids fall under that new color and so on and so on for example if then this child married their spouse would then start that new color so i would put their spouse here the year they got married and then all their children will go beneath that so that's just to keep things organized and to see who's in which household that's how you start a new color so i hope that that makes sense for you guys and i did put it so you guys can refer back to here new partners start a new color um as well as with the family tree so whoever got designated that new color the family tree goes as the, the same way so again uh here we're, we're gonna take for example simon and ida ashdown the ashdown family for my spreadsheet and they're this like corally color really pretty but they go here father and the mother and after that goes all their children which they had a total of eight children um and and they go here afterwards and then once their kids start once they their kids get married which actually one of their kids did get married um recently so here's leaf wine they have now started a new tree in a new color with cassandra ashdown um and their children will then go on the on this tree on this counter there's some more info on the custom aging and how like that works and how the numbers work and the charts you guys can look into this a little bit more if you'd like but for the most part on your blank spreadsheet you get a key anyways so you can just refer back to this and you just have to follow the sim days for every age stage this is just more info on the side by the way we got some more explanation of life expectancy and how that's changing and how that works 
works with the roller, the death roll, as I like to call it. Very dramatic, but that's how that works with that. And then the numbers, your Sims can and cannot roll change throughout the rules, aka the, the rules that are changing throughout the century or slash decades, because they will be start changing by decades. In the beginning, it's just by century, sort of, give or take. Now to kill Sims, especially um, children downward, uh, you will need a mod to kill your children downward. <laughs> so anything between babies and, and children, you need a mod for that. It is called children and slash toddlers can die of anything. I definitely suggest using it. If you can't use mods, this still can work for you. You just won't see them die. You won't get an urn, um, but you can just move Sims out of a household and then just delete them and then they're gone <laughs> out of your gameplay. So that's another way of getting around that. To kill a baby, you won't get an urn. You won't get the Grim Reaper, um, but you can do that within the game. Um, all you have to do is, I believe, enable testing cheats on the cheat. Once the cheats are on, you shift click on a baby and then you'll get this debug um, neglect option. And when you click on that, baby is whisked away and it kind of emulates the baby passing. But again, you won't get an urn or anything like that. So okay next we have pregnancies to deal with which i also get some questions about this if you play with mods i definitely suggest using mc command center wicked winds wonderful whims or like the pregnancy mod of your choice anything that allows you to customize pregnancy chances utilize it for sure by all means but these are the ones that i've used in the past so basically what you need to know is that we will be using percentages for your main household your heirs those are the people that will be using the uh, the actual stat. So what I mean by that is pregnancy chances. When your heir is a teen, when your heir is a young adult, when your heir family is like adult, adult part two, because we have adult part twos, and then elder, which is technically zero. But uh, those are your heir and, and the mom, whoever that is, your heir and their spouse, whoever that is, they will be using the chances because they are your main household. And the way that I have this set up, you're playing majority with your main household. Your side house households you don't get to see at least not the way the rules are set up you don't get to really see them and or interact with them that's why they use we use rules for them heirs can have as many babies as you can produce because with that get challenge you just never know who's gonna die right so but you don't have a limit i, I it's a question mark basically because i don't know how many you you will your heirs will produce and that's why they use the percentile and that's why they use the the chances, the stats. For your side household, anyone who's not the heir or the heir couple, that is a side household. And so you're gonna roll, when they get married, you're gonna roll to see how, how many pregnancy attempts they're allowed to have. So for your side household, you will roll to see how many pregnancy attempts they're allowed to have. So that doesn't mean children. That doesn't mean you're awarded that many children, whatever number you roll. It just means the amount of pregnancies you can have. So if you have like, for example, your, one of your side household sims rolls a six and that means they can have six pregnancy attempts. If they have twins, that doesn't knock down your sim from having from going from six attempts to now four attempts because they had twins it's not how that works um it just counts as the one pregnancy now if both twins were to die um then that still means you've got bumped down to, to five more pregnancies it doesn't mean you still are awarded six more because the baby died you know so you're down to five and then your sim gives birth again and this time they have triplet it, it doesn't mean you're no you got knocked down to two more pregnancy attempts it just means means that that just counted for one, the one. And if your di sim dies prematurely, uh, by all means, I guess you could just remarry. I don't like remarries in my own game. You can go ahead and do that, but just be wary. Your save file fills up pretty fast playing decades. So keep that in mind. All right, so for your heirs, the 
pregnancy chances, you can set those with MC Command Center in the, I believe it's in the Woohoo section of MC Command Center. So you'll just have to change it with that. Wicked Whims has its own settings as well as Wonderful Whims. They're kind of hand in hand. Um, but you could change those settings in there according to their age stage. So keep that in mind. And also keep in mind your Sims probably won't get pregnant right away. But that way it's a little more realistic. All right, so let's look at Descendants. You have your two main founder Sims when you first start. In the beginning, at least in the beginning, you always need a male heir. And it should always be the eldest son. The next heir officially takes over when they get I had situations in the past when we had uh, a transfer of heirship, but then that family fails to then have their own heir. So then the lineage then changes to the next in line. So it's always going to be your oldest male sim. So in this situation, it got transferred to this family and then the male heir took over and so on and so on. If you have no male heirs whatsoever, then obviously your female heirs take over technically because then they get married and their husbands take over. Gotta love the patriarchy, but it, yeah, so on and so on. But that is one of the reasons we do have side households because you never know who's gonna die and you never know who's gonna take over. Some families might not be able to produce an heir. Some families might not, might die really, really young. I've had that happen as well. Um, so you kind of depend on your side households as like a way to continue your decades. You will be rolling for extra illnesses and events. So keep an eye out for those, whatever time period you're playing. In. And those will come with its own extra set of rules. There's the family tree, which you also don't have to do. This is optional. I currently love, love, love and vouch for Quick Family Tree app. It is available for Android and iOS. It is free, free 99 minus the 99. <laughs> However, if you want to use it on your PC, on your computer, I only know of emulators for Windows and that is LD Player and Bluestacks. It allows you to emulate like a phone and it gives you access to the Play Store and that way you can download Quick Family Tree app and you can use it on your computer, which I personally really, really love for how easy it is to use. Only downside is you can't really link this online. So it's just kind of for you. And then you could take images of it, but it's you and mostly for you. I do have another video on how you can make portraits because I love making portraits of my heirs and like how things are progressing. It's really neat to see personally. Um, so there's there is a video if you'd like to do that. You don't have to as well, it's optional. And then yes, down below you can start by clicking on a decade slash century to get started. And those will have its own setup rules, guys. Go ahead and read through those. Or I'm about to head out. But another thing for the blank decade challenge spreadsheet, before I go, make a copy for yourself. I get a lot of people requesting access to the spreadsheet, which you will not be getting. <laughs> What you can do though is make your make a copy for yourself. You go up here to file, click make a copy, and voila, you will have a copy for yourself in your Google Drive. Congratulations, you are now the owner of your own blank decade challenge spreadsheet. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful and answered some questions. If you have any more, feel free to comment down below. There is the Discord as well well which is very informative and very helpful so there's also a link down in the info section of this video all right i will catch you in my next decades video you guys happy simming